you woke up before sunrise yesterday, you may have seen what looked like the Death Star passing in front of the sun. But fear not, the Empire is not invading. What you may have seen was actually an annular solar eclipse, also known as a ring of fire eclipse. So this week on Space Chat, I'll be talking all about yesterday's solar eclipse, and I will be joined by special guest Jackie Faherty, an astrophysicist from the American Museum of Natural History in New York. Now, if you are new to Space Chat, this is the weekly show where I come on, talk about space, answer your questions, and sometimes we even get to talk to special guests. So without further ado, let's talk about that ring of fire. So yesterday, just before and during sunrise, what appeared to be a large black disc moved in front of the sun, obscuring almost all of its fiery light, leaving just a bright ring of fire visible around its edges. This was an annular solar eclipse, famously known for this ring of fire. Now, during every or any solar eclipse, what happens is the new moon moves in between Earth and the sun, casting a shadow on our planet and covering the sun's face from our viewpoint. During a total solar eclipse, the moon completely covers the sun's face for a brief period of time, shadowing Earth in this temporary darkness. However, during an annular solar eclipse like we saw yesterday, the moon is a little bit too far from Earth to completely cover up the sun. And so instead, it covers most of the sun, leaving that infamous ring of fire around its edge. And it is very distinct from any annular solar eclipse photo you see. It is very obvious what is going on. It is a large black circle in the sky surrounded by a ring of fire. It looks straight out of Lord of the Rings. Seriously. Now, for those of you who watched it, I do hope that you wore protective eyewear, of course, uh, as staring at any solar eclipse is seriously dangerous without protective gear. Uh, no matter what the sun's doing or what event's happening, you're still staring at the sun. And ever since we were little kids, we've all been told, don't stare at the sun. So, don't stare at the sun without protective eye gear. Now, the eclipse was visible in parts of North America, it started in Ontario, Canada, and circled around the Northern Hemisphere. It showcased a full ring of fire over Northern Greenland, uh, ended over Northeastern Siberia. Also, in a rare event, this eclipse was actually visible over the North Pole, something that doesn't often happen. Now, unfortunately, no one here where I reside in the United States saw the full ring of fire eclipse, but many witnessed a partial annular eclipse, which can still be very stunning and visu visually striking. Um, and it again happened just about at sunrise and close to the horizon. For those of you sky watchers who saw it, or those of you who are looking at images after the fact, recapturing and reliving the experience. Now, the partial eclipse in the US was visible along areas in the southeast, northeast, midwest, and even in northern Alaska. Uh, those on the west coast, unfortunately, did not get such a great show, um, but those along the eastern United States really did. Uh, and sky watchers in much of Canada and also in parts of the Caribbean, Europe, Asia, and Northern Africa also saw part of the eclipse. So for those of you that got to see it, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you took a great eclipse photo, send it to space.com. We love seeing them and often are able to showcase them on our site, of course, with your permission. So without further ado, that's a little bit about the annular solar eclipse, what they are and what happened yesterday. So now I get to the question and answer part of Space Chat. Every week uh, during my show, I answer some of your questions. Now, if I didn't get to answer your question this time, fear not. There is always time in the upcoming weeks. If you have a question about space, science, upcoming events, feel free to send them to us and I will hopefully be able to answer them in a future video. So, let's see. All right, Captain Skywarn on Twitter asks, it was visible only in Canada and the Northeastern US. Won't see it in the Southern states, is that true? Um, so yes, it kind of, sort of. It was visible in Canada fully um, and around the Northern Hemisphere. 
Now, nowhere in the United States was the full annular eclipse visible. Uh, nowhere in the U.S. did you get that perfect 100% ring of fire uh, annular solar eclipse. However, in the Northeast and down the Northeastern shore all the way as far as, I believe, North Carolina, um, possibly even further south, uh, there was a partial eclipse visible. So people were still able to see the moon passing in front of the sun, at least in a partial way, while they may not have seen the ring of fire. Great question. All right, LNJR on Twitter asks, I saw a video of a welder using his phone camera as a shield to weld. I wondered if a phone can be used to look at an eclipse. This is a really interesting point. So with emerging technology, with all of us having cell phones, at least many of us, uh, it, it becomes a little murky. How do we view an eclipse? What's safe? What isn't? Things that seem safe might not be, etc. Right? Now, looking through any lens at an eclipse is still dangerous. If you have a camera and it's pointed at the sun, even if the sun is eclipsed or partially eclipsed, uh, if you're looking through that camera and through that lens, you're still looking at the sun, right? So what people do is they put protective shields over the lens of their camera, even their phone cameras. Now, I guess it would be possible for you to take your phone, uh, you know, look away, look at the ground and just point it at the sky and kind of blindly take a photo. Uh, that would probably be safe. However, you know, knowing human behavior, you'd probably at some point accidentally look up to see what you're pointing your phone at. And even looking at the sun, even during an eclipse, even for a brief moment of time, can cause serious eye damage. So I would say either investigate DIY or other methods of lenses or covers to put over your lenses for cameras or phones, or there are many options for eclipse glasses, DIY eclipse viewing boxes and glasses. Um, you want to make sure you have some kind of eye protection. You know, an eclipse is beautiful, but it's not worth permanently damaging your vision over. I promise you. All right, get off my soapbox. All right, Jess on Facebook asks, shouldn't all solar eclipses be named Ring of Fire? This is a great question. So the reason that annular solar eclipses have the name Ring of Fire is because, so we have the Earth, we have the Moon, we have the Sun. Because the Moon is a little bit farther away from Earth than it might be during other eclipses, it doesn't fully cover the Sun's face, and that's what leaves that Ring of Fire. But during other eclipses, the Moon is much closer to Earth, meaning that it appears bigger to us in general. And since the Moon appears bigger to us, it appears to cover a larger percentage of the Sun's face. That's you know why during a total solar eclipse, the Moon is large enough in the sky to fully cover the face of the sun, kind of blacking out the earth in total shadow for a brief few moments. Um, so these annular solar eclipses really are the only ones that have that ring of fire, um, though I guess is the sun in general you could call it a ring of fire? Sure, you could make that argument. Um, but the different types of eclipses do depend on the moon's distance from earth and those different shadows that it creates. All right, Martha on Facebook asks, how low or high on the horizon is this eclipse? So this eclipse was pretty low on the horizon, uh, pretty close to the horizon, just around sunrise. So that's an interesting opportunity for sky watchers and astrophotographers because not only then are you capturing images of the eclipse, but you might be getting trees, birds, buildings. Um, and while that might seem like it gets in the way, uh, it could actually be an interesting way to frame your shot. Uh, you know, find interesting topography, find some interesting buildings that you might be able to see the eclipse nearby in a photograph. Um, so yes, it was fairly close to the horizon. All right, Peter asks over email, when was the ring of fire total solar eclipse in Nova Scotia? Uh, this is a great question. Um, I'm not exactly sure what time in Nova Scotia it was visible for you, specifically exactly where you are. Um, but again, for most people during this eclipse, it was, you know, visible kind of around sunrise. Uh, eclipses like this are often either around sunrise or around sunset. Uh, and this was, you know, one for the early birds. Lily on Facebook asks, I'll only be able to see a partial view of it. Will it still make for pretty pictures? Lily, yes. Absolutely. Uh, even if it's just a partial solar eclipse, it is still an incredible sight. Uh, so you might not get a perfect ring of fire in your photograph, 
uh, but you might see this large dark disk moving in front of the sun, changing the colors all around you. It, it really is an unbelievable sight in terms of the colors, especially at sunrise, the colors of the sky. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, framing a photograph with nearby plants, trees, buildings, uh, because of its proximity to the horizon, Yes, you may have only seen a partial solar eclipse, but those can be just as beautiful. Great, great question. All right, Mike G on Twitter asks, why do total solar eclipses only happen once a year? Uh, well, they don't even happen that often, actually. Uh, total solar eclipses, on average, uh, happen on Earth somewhere, are visible somewhere on Earth about every 18 months. Um, those solar eclipses of every variety, well, we know that they happen because of the moon's placement in orbit and its distance to Earth. And this changes over time as both the moon and the Earth have elliptical orbits. They're not perfect circles, right? And so every once in a while, on average, about 18 months, uh, this total solar eclipse happens where the moon is close enough to Earth to cover the whole sun's face but it could be longer. It could be many years um, in between total solar eclipses in specific places. Um, but in general, somewhere on Earth, someone somewhere is gonna be able to see a total solar eclipse about every 18 months. All right, and Riley on Facebook asks, do we need special eyewear even if it's only a partial view of a solar eclipse? Yes, 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 yes. So solar eclipses, no matter what way you slice it, you're looking at the sun. Uh, during a total solar eclipse, there is that brief moment where the sun is completely covered and it's technically safe to take off your glasses for a brief moment, very, uh, very cautiously. But a partial solar eclipse means that the moon is covering part of the sun's face, right? So that means that part of the sun is still shining, blazing bright in the sky. And even though part of the sun's covered up, that doesn't mean that it can do any less damage to your eyeballs if you look directly at it. So please, don't look at the sun unless you have proper protective eyewear. Um, I'm touting its beauty and how incredible it looks, but again, I promise it is not worth the eye damage. So, uh, that was all the time we had for questions today. Thank you all again for your incredible questions. Uh, now I will turn it over to Jackie Faraty, my special guest this week. Jackie is an astrophysicist at the American Museum of Natural History in New York, where she specializes in the study of brown dwarfs, but she's also an avid astronomer and has some great words and tips to share about this week's solar eclipse and eclipse watching in general. Sky watchers and astronomy enthusiasts have something exciting to look forward to about a month after the total lunar eclipse will be the ring of fire solar eclipse. So could you tell me a little bit about what that means? Yeah, well, first, what's cool is that um, we were just talking about the lunar eclipse and most people might not realize that these eclipses chase each other. You get lunar eclipses and solar eclipses back to back. And the reason for that is that the Earth, the moon going around the Earth in its not perfectly circular, but near perfectly circular orbit, when it's lined up, um, so it's, it's, it's kind of off the plane of the Earth-Sun, the mm -hmm. Earth-Sun system by about five degrees, which is why we don't get total lunar and total solar eclipses every month. But when you do get a total lunar eclipse, you've got a total solar eclipse on its way too, because it means that the system has come into alignment. And, you know, 14 days or whatever it is after a total lunar eclipse, you're still lined up. Now, in this case, as it's going around, the moon is a little bit too far away from the Earth. So it doesn't completely cover the sun. Instead of like, if everybody remembers the 2017 eclipse, which got everybody all hyped up because it was the great American eclipse. It crossed North America from our Western side to our Eastern side. That was a position of the moon where it was close enough that it was the same size in the sky as the sun. But in this case, the moon, unlike the super moon aspect, this is the opposite. It's at its farther approach from Earth. So it doesn't completely cover the sun from our perspective. It covers a lot of it. It covers enough of it that you end up with this effect that there, 
be a black dot with a with with the rest of the sun shining around it which ends up looking like a ring of fire which is why we end up calling it the ring of fire eclipse or an annular um solar eclipse so and this one's kind of cool because it um the way the shadow of the moon is going to pass over the earth is is going to pass over the north pole and that's kind of a rare occasion for it to cross the pole but it's an exciting one for people on the northern uh, on the northeast of the united states you know people in new york people even from as far south as like north carolina i think can wow. catch something all the way up to maine you know the whole north or northeastern seaboard there from like mid the the mid south up will be able to catch this event and it's a sunrise eclipse for us a sunrise partial eclipse so the, the the sun will be rising while partially eclipsed those of us in new york it'll be about 72 or 73 percent eclipsed as it rises and so that's another cool thing right because the sun sunrises are always fun to watch sunsets maybe more so because who likes to get up early really but a sunrise also means that the sun is going to be low on the horizon and you'll get it like rising partially eclipsed and as it rises it's close to the horizon so you can see it with buildings or with trees or whatever it is make sure you have a clear view of it uh, but that's that's like a fun that's fun so cool. thing you can wake up in the morning go outside look at the sun and it is not going to look like your regular sun you have to wear your eclipse viewing glasses and all the things to be safe but you will notice that it looks like the Death Star is in front of the sun as it's rising. And uh, so that is a neat, neat um, kind of eclipse to watch. We, for, for those of us in the United States, we don't get the full eclipse. You have to go into northern parts of Canada and then out towards, the, um, towards Greenland and the northern part of the, the world to actually see it. But for them, they'll actually get to the, the equivalent of a totality where the the moon covers enough so you get a ring of fire. So it'll be a perfect, a perfect ring. But It'll I mean, people in New York ring. are going to wake up to see the Death Star covering the sun as it rises over the city. I think you that's still pretty cool. Yeah, you got it, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned eclipse viewing glasses. Uh, and I know that we we talked about the total lunar eclipse recently. And you know, looking at the moon is a pretty safe thing. But obviously, looking at the sun even an eclipsed sun is pretty dangerous. So yes, very yeah. dangerous. Could you tell me a little bit about kind of what it takes to like properly and safely view a solar eclipse? Yeah, I mean, uh, the eclipsed sun is still as dangerous to your eye. A partially eclipsed sun is as dangerous to your eye as, um, as the non eclipsed sun uh, because the sun has enormous amount of radiation that's coming towards you. So the the safest way to watch is with the what we, the eclipse viewing glasses that have a um, that can block out the majority of the light from the sun, mm -hmm. and there's recommendations from the American Astronomical Society that you can recommend to your readers that we, we um, the members of the American Astronomical Society after the 2017 eclipse because so many people were asking that question they wanted to be able to safely watch it what do you do we created a list of vendors where you could buy glasses from where you would be able to safely look at it. I mean, it's like heavy mylar, but don't use mylar. Like you have, there's a certification that you should look for, for the kind of thing you're going to use. Welders glasses, for instance, will have it. Um, and, and that is how you can safely look. If you don't want to look at the sun, you could always cast the shadow of the sun down onto something and look at, at its reflection and you'll see like the chunk of the sun taken out by the moon as you see the shadow of it on the ground or on a piece of paper or whatever you use to reflect the sun's light down. But eclipse viewing glasses, people might have them left over from 2017. True. And even if they don't, you can get a new pair. Definitely. I, I imagine trying to photograph a solar eclipse is also pretty tricky. Photographing any eclipse seems pretty tricky. It's tricky, but it is an ambitious, but I highly recommend it. I highly recommend trying it. 
And for that, you also want to put a safe filter over your camera lens, which you can also do. You can get nice filters to go over your camera lenses. You can even get very safe Mylar paper that you could wrap your lens in if you want a cheaper approach to it. Just look up to make sure that it's certified so that you can safely put it over your lens and then look through it and take the picture. Yeah. Uh, there's lots on this. And I would suggest that this partial eclipse is a cool one to try and do some astrophotography of because I bet you could get some good composite pictures of the horizon since the sun is low on the ground. It's it's a rising eclipse for us, for those of us in North America. It's very exciting. Yeah, e even without totality, it seems like it's gonna be a really visually pretty incredible event. Yeah, and it's, you know, sunrise is always a fun time of the day, whether you're a morning person or not, it is the beginning of our circadian rhythm on the planet. And uh, it's starting out with a boom on June 10th. It's starting out with a 70% um, eclipsed, partially eclipsed sun for us here in the New York City area. So it's a, that's, that's, that's not your everyday experience. And um, so kicking off sunrise with something like that is a cool thing. Definitely. Now, when we spoke about the lunar eclipse, you suggested as tips and tricks for families watching at home to most importantly have patience, find a good place to sit and bring snacks. Are those also tips and tricks you would recommend for a solar eclipse? Well, in this case, the patience isn't as much of a one that I have to give because it happens fairly quickly in the sense that for, for those of us that are in North America, you only have an hour to watch it. And in this case, my advice is go to bed early because you have to get up early. So you should get up earlier than when it's going to happen to make sure you've got your spot laid out. And then check out the weather because I'll tell you the thing that ruins a good eclipse is a cloud. <laughs> because a cloud will just cover the sun and you will have no idea that anything is happening. So check out the weather so you're not disappointed. I mean, some people really chase this kind of thing and look to make sure that they're not going to be, you know, um, in a place where it's definitely overcast and it's going to rain that morning. So if you want to get into the micro level of planning yourself a solar eclipse, keep an eye on the weather. All right, thank you again so much to Jackie for joining me today and for joining our talk about solar eclipses. Now, before we go, let's quickly recap what's new in space this week. So this week, Russia has threatened, again, to leave the International Space Station, this time over US sanctions. Relativity Space revealed their new fully reusable uh, and 3D printed rocket, the Terran R. Hayabusa 2 found that boulders on the asteroid Ryugu were fluffy in a scientific surprise. And scientists think that air pollution from re-entering satellites from mega constellations could damage Earth's ozone layer in a serious way. So this has been Space Chat. Join me again next Friday. And as always, stay tuned right here at space.com. And again, as always, if you have a question you'd like me to answer about science, about space, or you have an idea you would like me to cover in a future episode, send it on over. Uh, send it over onto space.com, social media, email, whatever floats your boat. Take care.